to actually execute Ajax takes a little bit of work. Typically, we put all of this inside of a function so that we don't have to write this out over and over again. Now we're going to quickly go over what an Ajax or an XML HTTP request looks like. First, we have variable and just the name of Ajax. There is no value. No value is required for this yet. And we're going to change the value at some other point. So what we said here was if window.xml HTTP request is true, then a variable Ajax is equal to a new XML HTTP request. Now this is for Internet Explorer 7 or higher, Chrome, Safari, or Firefox. This is where Internet Explorer becomes a little bit of a hassle for us as web developers because Internet Explorer or Microsoft likes to do things really, really different. As an example, if this was to turn out to be false, then we would have to run a different piece of code to get the same XML HTTP request. If window.xml HTTP request was false, then it's going to execute the else statement. Now that's saying that our Ajax variable is equal to new active X object. And in there we have Microsoft.xml HTTP. And this is for Internet Explorer 6 as well as Internet Explorer 5. Next, because our variable, which is Ajax, is now an object, we can manipulate it and we can use different parts of it. So Ajax dot on ready state change, which is on ready state change is equal to function. And remember this is an object, we learned about objects already, where this part can actually be a function as a value. So we have function if Ajax dot ready state is equal to four and Ajax dot status is equal to 200. If both those are true, then it's going to execute this section of our code when the requested page has fully loaded. To get the information from the fully loaded page, we use the response text object. So we use Ajax dot response text as the object and that holds the page information. So what we could do is we could go document dot get element by ID my div dot inner HTML is equal to Ajax dot response text. So basically what that means is Ajax is our XML HTTP request. Same thing with down here. This is actually an XML HTTP request and that request is our JavaScript asking the server if it can have access to another page. Now to actually execute this, what we need is Ajax dot open. We have our method here, get or post, we'll go over all of this soon enough. The page that we want to load and if we want to load it asynchronously. Now this is our actual request and this is how we send it. We just go ajax.send with parentheses and semicolon. So if we put this code into our website, it will automatically run this. That's often not what we want. Usually, you want the user to click a button or click a link and then run the Ajax. For example, when you click a picture on Facebook and that box appears on top of everything else, with that picture, it also has comments, likes, and ads. That picture has been Ajax onto that page. That picture, the comments, the likes, the ads were not preloaded. That's because the site holds tons of information and it would actually take a very long time for one page to load all of those images and all of those comments and it would be very hard on the server as well as the user. So what we can do is put most of this into a function and return the new XML HTTP request. Just like this, we have function. I just called it new Ajax. You can call it anything you like. Same thing, variable Ajax, we just declared a new variable. If window.xml HTTP request is true, remember that's for Internet Explorer 7 or higher, Chrome, Safari, and Firefox, then our variable is equal to new XML HTTP request with parentheses. If window.xml HTTP request is false, then it's going to execute the else. And then our variable Ajax is going to equal to new ActiveX object, Microsoft.xml HTTP. And lastly, our function is going to return the variable. So in every case, every time this is run, our function is going to return an ActiveX object or an XML HTTP request. Now we can call new Ajax as a variable value and we don't have to worry about typing all of that stuff all over again. So let's run a test script. What we have here is document type HTML. In our head section, we have our script. 
which is where we put our JavaScript. We have function new Ajax, that's exactly what we went over before. Then we have another function, and I just called it load me. We have variable Ajax handler is equal to new Ajax with parentheses. That means that Ajax handler, the variable, has a value of whatever is returned here. So it's either going to be an XML HTTP request or an ActiveX object as an XML HTTP Microsoft request. Then we have Ajax handler dot on ready state change is equal to function. And this is our function here. If our ready state is equal to four and Ajax handler status is equal to 200, then we're going to change the element that has the ID of load me. We're going to change its inner HTML to whatever our text is. And inside the same load me function, what we have here is how we actually open a request. It's like starting to write a letter. We have the method. We have the page that we want to Ajax. And if we want it to load asynchronously, then we're going to mail our letter by doing Ajax handler dot send with parentheses. And that's a send method. And then in our body, what we have is div ID is equal to load me with a space near. And that's just this empty space right here. Button on click is equal to load me. That's going to activate this. That's our value of our button, it just says Ajax my page. And when we click this, because it's an on click function, it's going to activate all this. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we click it. And voila, it says this has been Ajaxed. What we did above was create a function to create our new XML HTTP request and return the requested info. We can then use a variable to access that function and to store that function's information that it returns. And that is exactly what we did. We looked at Ajax handler dot ready state. And if its state is equal to four, then it's almost ready, almost fully loaded. We also checked if the Ajax handler dot status is equal to 200. Well, if the ready state is equal to four and the status is equal to 200, then the file has been loaded and we can execute the code inside of the if statement, which again, we did. But in order for this to open the Ajax request, we must use Ajax handler dot open and we use request type or the method. So get or post and we'll cover this a little bit later. The file that we want to Ajax and if it's asynchronous, true or false. After that, we just use document dot get element by ID, the ID name dot enter HTML and our value. And we used Ajax handler dot response text. And we know how to do this part already. We know how to change the inner HTML of any element inside of our document object model. So before you lose faith in what Ajax is and exactly how to use it, we'll go over what most of that was in the next few classes. Right now, I just wanted to show you how this works and how we can make the most of it by using a function as well as the ability that it possesses. Also, if you run this script on your local computer, it might not work. If it does not work, Try running a server such as WAMP or LAMP, or you can put this file online, upload it through an FTP or one of those uh, cPanel uploaders on your website. For example, yourwebsite.com slash ajax.html or uh, even some free hosting site.com slash your site slash ajax.html. The reason that this won't work on a local computer and it actually needs a server is because Ajax or the XML HTTP request is actually going to look for the server that the file is hosted on and is going to ask the server if it can have access to another file. And if you're not running a server or if your web page is not on a server, then there's no server to look for and this won't work right. And again, I just want to tell you, don't get overwhelmed by all of this. We're going to go over all of this individually. And by the end of the Ajax module here, you will be able to fully understand how Ajax works and how to execute it yourself.